Wow. Bonjour, good morning. I would like to begin by thanking Canada Sports Hall of Fame for honoring me with this award. I would also like to congratulate my fellow inductees. You're all such inspiring people and I am truly humbled today. Thank you to the sponsors and on the organizers, Ruth, for all those WhatsApps all the way to Australia. Kept me, uh, kept me connected, that was great, thank you. For me, the best part of uh, receiving this award is getting to thank people who helped and inspired me along the way. I'd like to begin with where it all started, the Nanaimo Track and Field Club. I was nine years old when I started running and I learned to fall in love with competing with that track club. I think grassroots organizations like Nanaimo Track Club um, deserve recognition for providing a start gate for many Canadian athletes. I would like to thank also the coaches that I worked with along the way. Um, after I left Nanaimo, I worked with Ron Moffitt with a Brandon Sundowners and won two national junior titles under him. I ran with Ron Mann and Warren Mandrell at the Northern Arizona University. But throughout my international career, I had the privilege to work with Wynne Gimitrosky, who was a true genius at creating a training regime, regime that uh, got me to perform um, and peak at the right time. And believe me, that's not easy to do. So thank you, Wynne. I'd also like to let, thank Dr. David Johns, who helped me with self-belief, self-efficacy, and race planning, race preparation. Dr. Wally Craver for helping me with my overall mental health. As I said, getting it right under pressure requires the right mindset. And I can remember at the 1992 Olympics, uh, trying to sleep in the Olympic Village, and every time I closed my eyes, I'd just see the track, and I'd get a jolt of adrenaline, and it was just, you know, obviously important to, to sleep and rest. So I had to get to a place where I felt calm and relaxed, and I would visualize my kushi, which is Dakota for grandmother, and I would imagine her in her sweet grass, and she used to plait our hair, my sisters and I, and put little leather strips on the bottom, and I'd try to evoke that. And I'm so grateful for those memories from my grandmother that helped me to get to a peaceful and tranquil place. It's not easy being supportive of the athletes that you compete against, but I want to send a special Thank you to two of my teammates, former Canadian teammates, uh, Britt Townsend and Charmaine Crooks, two athletes that in moments when things seemed really hard would give me a sentence or two that would just lift me and made me believe that I could carry on. I'd also like to thank uh, one of my best friends who was in the trenches with me in the days we were grinding it out in the training working so hard and who is still now a lifelong friend, Rhonda Robinson. Thank you for your, your comradeship and your support. Finally, as I stand here today, I can't help but reflect. Uh, when I competed at the Canadian Track Championships in 1985, they were in Ottawa. Um, and my mom decided to come and watch me run and so she jumped in her car and brought along three of my brothers and uh, came to watch me run. And I'm so, so very grateful that now nearly over 40 years later, um, most of my family is here, made the trip from Brendan. They didn't drive, they flew, so that's good. <laughs> um, and on that note, my family was my inspiration, my motivation. And when I was running, their love and support uh, really lifted me, especially when I was struggling. I wanna say a special thank you to Rob. Thank you for telling me never to quit. <sighs> to Margie. All those years, 1988, getting to the Olympics, I was sleeping on her couch, training. You were my coach. Um, to Billy and Kenny, thank you for timing me all those times to run to the court of the store and and pretending that I broke my world record every single time. <laughs> for Stu, thank you for telling me to burn rubber at the end of the race. Uh, Gloria, 
I don't know if you remember jumping out of the car and dad was driving down the road in Shiloh, Manitoba and you guys would jump out of the van ahead of me and I'd have to catch you. Do you guys remember that? Thank you. <laughs> she was not that big when that happened. And Eddie, all those days in CFB, Shiloh, in the middle of the night, running on the ice and snow. And I'm sorry I was such a bad sport every time you beat me. <laughs> Finally, my brother Derek, who's no longer with us today. I can remember him coming to a national cross country meet and I was in second and I got to about probably 400 meters to go and he was just standing on the sideline and he just kept saying, turn on the afterburners. So I ended up winning that. So with that, I should just do that, turn off the afterburners and get off the stage. Thanks very much, everybody.